Hey everyone, this is Vaughn Vernon. I know that you've found my Ports and Adapters Architecture tutorials very useful and I've gotten a lot of good feedback on my YouTube channel. I wanted to continue with the third part of this tutorial and uh, today we're going to get into some actual code for the architecture. So, well, actually code, yeah, I'm going to sort of write some code, but I'm going to continue here below the original drawings that I was using. This is sponsored by my company, Kalele, and you'll find us at kalele.io. And you can uh, look into my upcoming workshop in January, the toward the end of January of 2025, or any of our upcoming workshops at kalele.io slash iddd workshop. As I go through these examples, I'm going to show you both Java and C Sharp examples of package and namespaces, if, if you will, the modules that the different parts of the architecture will be kept in and I'm going to draw some containers for those. Recall that in the architecture we have the driver's side and the driven side. And not thinking about these as layers, but again this is the outside and this is the outside and the inside is where the ports live. So to start off with, how are we going to do the basic naming? Well, let's say that my company Kalele is coming up with an e-commerce system of some kind. This could be the primary name that we would use. Let's just consider this as being the prefix for it. And in Java, this is the company name, and we usually use the top level domain of the website uh, or the domain name that the company owns. And this is the application, for example, and if you're thinking in domain-driven design, this could be the name of the bounded context as well. But since we're looking at a sort of large e-commerce system, and that's just the name that we're using right now, we wouldn't think of an e-commerce system as a whole as being a single bounded context. There are likely many different bounded contexts, or at least several, I would say many is accurate in an e-commerce system, again, depending on the scope of the entire system. But when you think about it, you have at least some kind of catalog. You have the shopping cart. Is that going to be part of the catalog or will that be a different bounded context? You have order processing, you have order management, you have shipping, you have inventory. Shall I go on? Well, I think you can see that e-commerce is not a really good name for a bounded context, but I'm just showing you here as an example, the second part of the name uh, after the company identification, if you're using DDD, would generally be this kind of bounded context name, the name of the context. So I'm just going to eliminate this right now. Just wanted to introduce you to that idea. Now, if we were to think in terms of what will be the name of series of adapters here on the driver's side, what might those be? Do you want to think in terms of this being the driver's side and the adapters? And then because of that, would we go over here to this side? Would this then be the driven side adapters? You can use this kind of naming if you would like to. I personally don't really like this because what we're leaning into is the names used by the architecture. It doesn't really tell you as far as the bounded context or as far as the monolithic application is concerned, what are the actual areas of this from an architectural standpoint. So what I prefer to do is in this area, I would tend to call this infrastructure, and that would likewise be the case for this side. It would just be part of the infrastructure. And then we would have different parts of the infrastructure underneath this. And I'll illustrate this further 
But let me just make this a little bit more readable for now. And of course, if we were going to introduce something for the .NET side of the world for C Sharp, our namespace would be something like Kalele e-commerce infrastructure. So having something like that probably makes sense. On the inside where the ports are, what are we going to do here? Well, we also had this kind of idea of, would this be inside, for example, would this be the inside, to use another kind of design naming, that would be ports. So would this likewise be inside ports? Well, again, this is kind of using the technical parts of the architecture naming for this. So what I would rather do is just say that this is the application. And so we would also have the application on this side. And then the names for both sides of this, at least the starting names, would be the exact same thing. So both sides of this, both the driver's side and the driven side, would be the same. So actually, let's just kind of rewind this a bit and let's move this name down or this line down and make room for the common naming here. Now, additionally, within the ports, if you are going to have a domain model separate from the application, how will that be named? Will it be application.model? It could be. So let's run with that just for a moment and say that we have IO Kalele e-commerce application model. What would live in the application itself? Well, let's make one container for that here. And let me draw a container here, a little bit smaller. And this was going to have to bring to the front of this container. And link. let's bring this inside here. And recall that we might have this catalog service inside here, which could be an application service as a stereotype. But then if we had a separate model package, which I think we should of some kind, the model would have to live in another container. Let's say that we have yet another container here for the model. And I think you know what kind of component would go in here. This would be now the catalog itself, the catalog model object. And this could be, for example, an aggregate. Um, we could just say, since let's not put too much emphasis on the domain-driven design tactical modeling tools. So in this case, we could just simply have a catalog entity and we have a catalog service as an application service. Now, I'd like to suggest that possibly you may get a little bit better naming out of this. It's an option, it's an opinion, but you might find that just having a Kalele e-commerce model and a Kalele e-commerce application, that it might just keep these two things a bit more separated. In the future, I'm going to go over uh, some additional guidance on why you may not want to use even application services at all. But for now, let's just say that we do have application services and let's just, for the sake of simplicity and the example that this is catalog service and that we have our model separated from that here in e-commerce model. Of course, if we're going to also honor .NET here, we're going to say Kalele e-commerce model and let's move this up here and then let's do similarly here that we have Kalele commerce. So these are the really important parts of the application overall, but where does the driven side live over here? Well, recall that we had a catalog repository and the catalog repository would just be part of the model. That is because it is responsible for loading catalogs. And again, this catalog service would have some kind of dependency on the catalog repository, and it would use that to load or get a, cat, a pre existing catalog or to persist catalog changes, whether that be the initial catalog creation or persisting changes, updates to the catalog state. And then the catalog service would also have a dependency on 
the catalog entity which gets loaded. And recall too that that would mean that the catalog repository has a dependency on our catalog entity, right? Because it is going to persist and recall that for use by the catalog service. On the outside now, how are we going to divide this up into separate containers? Well, let's uh, first think about the kinds of containers that we need. And let me just suggest something here too. I'd like to just shorten this name. I think that in this case, having an abbreviation for infrastructure is not a bad thing. It's a lot less characters. Your naming is going to be much shorter and we can do that on both sides and i think that although typically speaking i don't like abbreviations especially when i'm using domain driven design but this is an abbreviation that actually doesn't get in the way it, it's not difficult to figure out that we're talking about infrastructure here so i don't mind having an abbreviation here for this type so what are we going to have in terms of overall modules, as in packages and namespaces? What do we have on this side? As far as our driver's side goes, what kinds of adapters do we have? Recall that we have controllers. In Java, we would just say .controller. In .NET, we might use the plural of that. It's really up to us to decide on what those container names are going to be. But again, we're going to have our controller here and it's going to be our catalog controller. And on this side, on the driven side, what is this going to be? Well, recall that we're going to have some kind of persistence for the catalog repository. So this is a database adapter and this is going to be catalog repository, but what kind of catalog repository? Recall that we were going to have a Postgres catalog repository. So the controller over on this side is going to be dependent on the catalog service and the repository on this side will be dependent on this, but how so? Well, it's going to be implementing the interface and that's just not looking very good. So let me replace this with a simple line and recall this is realization or implementing repository the catalog repository in the postgres catalog repository and this is access to the database on this side so this is technical and for the sake of just showing a little bit of a difference here let's make these a gray color just to show that these are on the outside that they are adapters so this is sort of the beginning to this. Um, you can imagine then that as far as our overall architecture, we're going to have this and let's create yeah, some even spaces there. So this would be the directory structure and the naming in Java. And let's just assume that we want a similar kind of decision made for these for .NET. Let's get these on this side. Okay, so we could then have, as far as directory structure goes, the same kind of directory structure as we see here. In .NET, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be just like this, but I think it's convenient to think about that. You can simply use any kind of naming inside the C sharp file that you want to and the directory structure doesn't really matter whereas for Java your directory structure would follow this very same pattern so we would have this kind of source main for example to use a very typical naming for this and then we would have also persistence here so you can see how these would line up and then of course we would have in this case, instead of infrastructure, we would have application here. And we would also have a model, which logically speaking is inside the application still, but it might be useful just to keep these at a slightly different level, um, com completely separated from one another. That way we logically 
are thinking that the application has a different concern or set of concerns from the model and this might just work out better. But you also have the option to use this initial example that I gave. And in this case, we would have the application slash model. And in this case, we would have dot model here. And I would say most likely we would have a similar kind of directory structure here. Although in .NET, we don't do this. We don't have this kind of structure here. And of course, our directory naming will take on the camel case or mixed case, however you like to think of that, or we could do this. So these are just two different styles, kind of of uh, the same thing. And of course, we can see if the model was designed just a little bit differently, we would have this kind of structure, for example, as an option. And I guess we can get rid of that. So this is kind of the Java view of the world and the .NET C Sharp .NET end of the world over on this side. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how this might work out as far as the modules a la Java packages and C Sharp .NET namespaces. Thanks everyone for joining me today. I just wanted to point out again, you can find my workshops at kalele.io slash IDDD workshop. And as far as modules go, you can look at my book, Implementing Domain Driven Design Chapter 9 it is exclusively covering modules. And in Strategic Monoliths and Microservices, we cover uh, modularity and modules cover to cover. So follow up with those and you'll learn a lot more than I was able to teach you here in this short time frame. And I look forward to our next tutorial together. Take care.